Good afternoon, everybody. We're here for another live at the NFLPA um, Facebook Live session. Today we have Andre Collins, who is with uh, PAF at the NFLPA, and we have Nolan Harrison, who is with the former Players Department. So thanks, guys, for joining us. Thanks and so we'll, we'll jump right into it. So tell us first, Andre, you know, a little bit about the PAF and what you guys do here at the NFLPA. Okay. So the PAF actually stands for Professional Athletes Foundation. It's the NFLPA's uh, foundation that has existed for more than 25 years. It's a need-based granting uh, program to former players um, that are facing financial difficulty. So we supply um, funds for um, housing, uh, car note, rent, uh, you name it, medical, you name it, anything that a player might need in that tight space, the PAF jumps in there and tries to fill that gap. And how about you guys knowing on the former players side? So the former players department actually houses the PAF, um, so that's one of the services we provide. Also putting together programs for our guys under two years, we manage the chapter system and the membership system. So January 1st we went dues free. So every former player is a member. So we have 6,300 active members, but we got 20,000 players that are actually members out there. And we, we try to put together as many programs as possible, whether it's using the PAF, whether it's using the trust, any resources that we can to get these 34 chapters functioning and, and give safe places for our former players to come, to get that camaraderie back, and also find out some good information for some of the, some of the programs that might be beneficial to them. So you guys are, are both former NFL players, which I'm sure helps you and, and the roles that you have um, but and you probably can attest to this it's, it seems like the NFLPA when guys see the most benefit out of what we do as a union is when their football careers are over and that's where you step in like you said you help out with whatever needs the guys might have and then you have different chapter meetings to kind of bring the guys together and, and again reinforce the benefits that we have so you know we talked about you go around to you went recently to Pittsburgh to a, a chapter meeting so Use that as, as a way to kind of show us what you do as a department and what the setting is like there to help these guys along the way. Well, we're, you know, just right now we're in peacetime. So um, one of the other big pieces that Andre and I are very, very deeply involved in when it comes time to get CBA negotiations is helping, you know, find the best benefits that we can negotiate for the guys. But so when we're not in negotiations, we are going to make sure that the guys are, are involved and understand all the benefits they have. So when I go to Pittsburgh, we have what's called a chapter meetup. Uh, we invite all the former players in the area to get together. We, you know, we break bread, usually having a place we had it at Jerome Bettis' restaurant um, at Bus 36, which is pretty cool. Um, and so you see pictures of all the guys on the wall. So they like being in that environment. They get to see themselves. But I think more importantly, you know, we bring literature and materials so that they can um, have an understanding about what, what's available to them. And we have kind of a town hall session. So the majority of it is guys just having a good time, getting a couple of drinks, having some food. Then we break and the chapter leader who is Robin Cole there, he'll call the meeting and we'll spend 10, 15 minutes or however long the guys want. Um, and they get to ask me questions and I get to go over the benefits booklet and really drill down for some of the things that they might know and then they might not know about. And then reemphasize the fact that for every former player that's there, they know five or six that aren't. And let's make sure we get them out to the next meeting so that they can be aware of all the benefits so we can really spread the message about all the things that the PA does for us. Sounds good. And, and Andre, as you're talking with a lot of these former players, um, what are some maybe misconceptions that are out there when you have these conversations that you can maybe use this as a platform to address that the guys might have? Well, certainly for the families and players that are out there listening, certainly as former players, Nolan and I have gone through that transition. We know how difficult that can be emotionally, physically, psychologically, and financially. So at the PAF, we just want to be able to support players uh, in that space and their families. Um, a lot of times, it's not just a player that we serve or the player just doesn't have that concern for himself. He's also concerned about his wife or his children or, you know, the people that he's associated with. So for us, we really just try and evaluate the player's situation. Every situation is different. Every need is different when it comes to the individual players. I have a team that is uh, fantastic and tireless when it comes to serving the former players. We get in there, we try and assess the situation, we try and figure out the best way that we can bring that player uh, back to stability in his life. So 
Um, we've done some really cool things and some really great things over the years. I'm very um, excited about the opportunity that I have here at the NFLP. I always say I have the best job here because I get to give away uh, money uh, to former players in need. Um, and a lot of times it's not um, a down and out situation. Sometimes it's just you need a little help to get over the hump to kind of get on to get on your way and I always tell uh, my players that being a former player is way better uh, than being an active player once you figure out your next course. That's, that's an interesting point but you, you want to build on that? Yeah, one of the things that and Andre is always he never likes to toot his own horn but you know whether it's the soft benefits that we have the membership stuff or whatever the most important work that's done and within our within our apartment is the PAF. The PAF saves lives um, and his staff does a crack job and the things that they have to deal with and it's all confidential you know and players come to them in confidence and they really do need help and sometimes it's talking somebody off of a cliff and sometimes it's you know it's helping them out of a medical situation you know sometimes they hit a bill you know if they're in Arizona it's 120 degrees outside and their air conditioning is about to be cut off that's a real problem for a family and they really do a good job of making sure that the players are taken care of. And I don't think that gets talked about nearly enough or his, 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 his part of the department doesn't get the credit I think it deserves. Hmm. And to build off of that last point you made about you feel like it's better to be a former player than an active player, like most people that, that watch this might say you're crazy. You know, the fame of being in the NFL, the, the money, the fans. But what makes you say that? Well, I think as, as a former player and an NFL player, you always will be that person. So you will always have a fan base. I still get autograph requests today, and I haven't played in almost 20 years. So that part never leaves. But I think the, the pressure of playing, once that is lifted, you certainly have a better quality of life there. Certainly the risk of being out on the field um, and banging, you know, every day in and out. You know, you certainly have a better quality of life there. As a 48-year-old man, I don't want to be out there banging. But I think once you figure it out, there's tremendous benefits. You know, our benefits team also works tirelessly to create a benefits package that will support players in their post-football career. So you still get the benefits of, you know, being a player, you just don't have to go out on the field. Now, you don't get the player's salary, but I think we all come to terms with that rather quickly. Um, but I think the joy of having played and the joy of still being involved, the joy of still being a member in the former player services uh, department, those are all good things. And our community of players is very strong. It's like a fraternity. Um, right. And, it, and we're, we're very close and we take a lot of pride in having been former players. Yeah. And I know you guys are both modest, you don't want to toot your own horn, but since we're talking about playing careers, quickly tell us, you know, what your experience was in the NFL and then same with you, Nolan. I felt like I had a great experience. I wouldn't trade my career with anyone. So I was not a Hall of Fame player, but I played on some good teams and I, I felt like I was very productive. Um, I think my time here in Washington was probably the most exciting. We had an opportunity to play and win the Super Bowl in 1991. And then toward the end of my career, I had a chance as a football historian to play for the Chicago Bears. And there's no better uniform uh, to wear than the Bears uniform. So for me, from the beginning to the end, I felt like it was very complete. It was 10 years. It was a lot of hard work, a lot of joy, um, a lot of setbacks, and a lot of success. And I wouldn't have traded that. And Nolan? As for me, um, you know, I spent 10 years in the NFL, my first six with the Raiders. So. Um, one of the great joys is I was part of that team that moved from LA to Oakland. Um, some of the fans out there remember I probably didn't say a lot of nice things about us when we were, about LA when we we're moving, but there was a reason for it. I mean, you can't fill a coliseum; you know, it's time to go back to Oakland where they belong. And we won't even get into that discussion. But um, my time as a Raider, um, growing up, coming out of Indiana, not even going west of the Mississippi, getting to LA, you know, being around Ice Cube, Magic Johnson, anybody who watched that, you know, watched Straight Outta Compton. That was during the time that I was there. I witnessed all that stuff. But, you know, some, even some of the negative stuff, the, the riots and, you know, the original Denny and Rodney King being, we were all right there experiencing all those things. So I wouldn't trade that for the world, playing with great players, Howie how Long and Greg Townsend and, you know, Winston Moss and Eddie Anderson. And I mean, it's Lionel Washington, so many guys that I just had great relationships um, with and, and there's just great guys and they were great teammates and taught me a lot. Then I went to Pittsburgh and, and we won more. Um, so that's always fun, you know, went to the AFC Championship game and lost to Denver, um, to Denver, and, <laughs> but it was a great three years, and it's another great organization, the Rooney family really, um, they do a good job, Coach Gower was my coach, and 
more great players, you know, Greg Lloyd and, you know, LeVon Kirkland and Joel Steed and Keevan Henry. I mean, Carnell Lake, I, I couldn't ask for better teammates. And then I finished out here with Washington. So after that 10 years, and I go back, back west, and my job takes me back to where I ended up. So it's just, it's been a journey, and it's been an outstanding one. I wouldn't trade it for the world. That's cool. Sounds like it. And both of you guys obviously talk to a lot of former players every day, but maybe to the active players that are listening, what steps, whether it be they're in the prime of their career, the twilight of their career, what steps would you recommend that they start taking to help with the transition so it's not like a, a jarring thing when they retire and they have to adjust to that different lifestyle? Well, I, I just, you know, I would say to the active players, you know, if, if any of them are listening today, um, that life has lots of different seasons. You know, you'll go from making a lot of money to making no money in a, in a very short window of time. So you have to prepare for that emotionally. Uh, just because you're an active player doesn't mean you can't focus on some of those things and start to try and identify with some of those feelings. So get a head start on that and kind of kind of know what's going to hit you in a few years. But the great thing is there's a tremendous amount of resources here and we'll be able to, to walk you through that process. And from my standpoint, guys, current players, just make sure when, when Don and his team come, when your directors come, whether it's Ernie, Tom, all those guys, when they come to your locker room, listen, because they have a lot of good information. Uh, make sure you reach out to them whenever you need anything. This, this union is here for you. Um, but you need to make, you have to take advantage of it. If you don't engage, um, you miss out on a lot of things. And you also miss out on the things that are available to you when you leave the game. So get engaged. Make sure you ask Don and his team a ton of questions. Make sure you get in contact with making Bethany and Benefits. Make sure that you know everything the union is here fighting for and making sure that you have. And um, what would you say as far as, I know there's a lot of different campaigns and initiatives you guys do within each of your departments, but is there one that you're particularly proud of or maybe there's something coming up that you think guys should know about that this can especially be helpful, whether it be, again, former or active players? When, well, I'd say probably the, proudest moments we for you, but the proudest moments I think the both of us had a chance to, when we built the trust, so you've already had, had Bahati on and as executive director of the trust, I think the trust is the best transition program for former players. And we were part of the, of the, of the genesis of that program. We helped build it and to watch it, you know, watch us birth it from the very beginning, working with IDO, growing it, going through all the different case studies and the data, and then we finally get this thing together and we, we launch it and we let that baby go. And you know, over 3,000 players that are already in the system, over 6,000 are engaged in the system. Players are getting the needs that you know addressed. It's that to me is the proudest thing that I've done in the six years here. Well, for the PAF, I think the website yourpaf.com, y-o-u-r-p-a-f.com, is a really fun website for former players to go. We try and show the players a better image of themselves uh, through the website. There's some really cool articles on there titled Under the Next Generation of You, where we highlight our former players and what they're doing in their next life. And they're all different types of things and the different types of careers that players have after their football career. So I'm really excited about that and the, the players seem to like it. So certainly uh, check, check some of that out. Well, before I give you both some closing remarks, we'll check, I don't know if we have any questions from anybody. Nope. Well, any that's our life story. <laughs> <laughs> but I just think we did a good job. Explaining I was going to say, I was going to say, you covered everything, <laughs> which is good. Um, but is there anything else you guys, either of you, wanted to add, or you think that's important for for the audience to know that we didn't talk about? I was just going to say, you know, on some of the health issues for former players, there's a lot of misleading information out there. I think this organization is working tirelessly to try and get uh, to the bottom of that and, and figure out the facts. Um, the football player study at Harvard, if you haven't uh, signed on to that and gone through the process of filling out the questionnaire, uh, please do so. You can call the offices here. We can get you that information, but it's important for everyone who's ever played uh, pro football in the NFL to fill out that survey to help us get to the answers. Yeah, they got some, we're part of the player advisors group. We've been building that from the beginning. A hundred million dollars went into the Harvard study, but, and it's right now almost the largest study to ever study former players. We got, I think, 3,200 that have, that have yep. done the petition, um, done the questionnaire, so please sign up for it. And another thing, guys, we have our convention coming up here in Scottsdale, March 17th through the 21st. Come out, 
you know, for the very least, come out and enjoy the company of your former teammates. Get to know the guys, get to know the resources, and I'm looking forward to seeing everybody at the meetups in 2017. It's going to be a great year. Awesome. Well, Nolan, thank you so much for your time. Andre, thank really you. good. And thank you guys for tuning in. Check back next week. We'll have another uh, live at the NFL, 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 yeah, live at the NFL PA. That's live.